China has crossed a line that until now, only the United States had managed. On September 22, 2025, according to the War Zone, the People's Liberation Army Navy confirmed through footage and reports that the Type 003 carrier Fujian successfully catapult launched and recovered three different aircraft types using its electromagnetic launch system. This is not routine testing. It is the first undeniable proof that China has mastered the most advanced aircraft carrier launch technology in the world. The tests were simple in appearance, but revolutionary in meaning. Observers saw the J-35 stealth fighter, the J-15T catapult-capable fighter, and the KG-600 airborne early warning aircraft all take to the skies from Fujun's deck. Each was accelerated by the electromagnetic catapult, and each returned, snagging the arresting wires on landing. It was the first time China demonstrated that the Fujun is not a paper tiger, but a functioning Catobar carrier. Why is this moment so significant? Until this test, the Fujin had been seen on trials at sea since May 2024, but its true capability remained unverified. Rumors circulated, satellite images sparked speculation, but no one outside China knew whether the ship could really launch advanced jets the way America's carriers do. Now, with this footage and data, the answer is clear. Yes, it can. Let's break down exactly what happened. According to the war zone, the J-35 stealth fighter, China's naval analog to the American F-35C, rolled into position on the Fujun's deck. The electromagnetic catapult engaged. Instead of the roar of steam or the leap from a ski jump ramp, the jet was hurled forward by controlled magnetic pulses, reaching launch speed in seconds. Its nose lifted, and the jet was airborne, disappearing into the sea sky. Then came the J-15T. This fighter is a development of the earlier J-15, but modified to withstand the stresses of catapult launch. The test proved that China's engineers have successfully adapted their existing fighter fleet to the new system. And finally, the most important launch, the KG-600 Airborne Early Warning and Control Aircraft. This was the critical proof. In the past, China's carriers could not operate fixed-wing AWACS planes because ski jumps simply could not provide the acceleration needed for such large, heavy aircraft. But now, with EMS, the KG-600 was launched into the sky. Its rotating radar dish turned, representing China's new ability to extend its surveillance horizon hundreds of miles beyond the fleet. Each of these landings was equally vital. The arresting gear, a system of high-tension cables across the deck, caught the aircraft smoothly, bringing them to a halt in seconds. Together, these launches and recoveries formed the heart of carrier aviation. Without them, Fujin was a hollow symbol. With them, it is a functioning tool of war. The war zone noted that these tests confirm not only the hardware, but the crew's growing proficiency. Operating emails is not like flipping a switch. It requires precise synchronization, constant power stability, and expert coordination between deck crews, pilots, and command. The fact that multiple different aircraft types were launched in the same test period suggests that the BLA Navy is already rehearsing integrated operations, not just proving the machinery works. The technology itself deserves attention. Electromagnetic catapults use linear induction motors to accelerate aircraft with magnetic pulses, replacing the older steam piston systems. They can be fine-tuned for lighter drones or heavy AWACS planes, something steam struggled with. They reduce stress on airframes, lower maintenance demands, and allow for higher sortie rates, more planes in the air, more often. For China to demonstrate this system operationally less than a decade after America's own debut on the USS General Ford is extraordinary. The details captured in imagery and reporting are striking, 
Analysts pointed to the launch bar visible under the nose gear of the J35, proof of catapult compatibility. They highlighted the tail hooks slamming into the arresting cables on recovery. They noted the KG600's distinctive radar rotodome rising above the deck crew as it was prepared for launch. Each of these images circulated online, leaving no doubt that the event was staged for visibility as much as for technical validation. It is worth remembering how carefully choreographed these tests are. A new carrier is not proven in one day. The Fujin had already undergone months of shakedown trials, testing propulsion, navigation, and basic systems since its first sea outing in May 2024. But until now, no one had seen an aircraft actually fly from its deck. This demonstration represents the final step before formal certification of the ship's aviation systems. Observers also noted what was absent. There were no mass deck operations, no dozens of aircraft spotted at once, no cycles of continuous launch and recovery. This was controlled one plane at a time, measured and deliberate. It was proof of concept, not yet proof of capacity. But for China's Navy, even this step is revolutionary. The tests also underlined the sheer scale of Fujian. At nearly 80,000 tons, with a deck length over 316 meters, the ship is massive enough to accommodate multiple catapults and simultaneous launch operations in the future. Her advanced arresting gear powered by electromagnetic systems as well promises smoother recoveries and reduced stress on aircraft. Her entire electrical grid was designed with these tests in mind. This is not a retrofit but a purpose-built Catabor platform. According to the war zone, the symbolism cannot be overstated. With the J-35 in the air, China demonstrated it can field stealth fighters from a carrier. With the J-15T, it showed legacy fighters can still be used effectively. And with the KG-600, it proved for the first time that Chinese carriers can deploy fixed-wing airborne early warning aircraft. That final detail may be the most critical, because a carrier without AWACS is blind. Now, Fujin has eyes. The Warzone's analysis concluded that while this doesn't mean Fujin is fully combat ready, it does mean the threshold has been crossed. The systems work, the aircraft fly, the ship functions as designed. From here, the next steps will involve increasing tempo, launching multiple aircraft, conducting day and night operations, integrating refueling, and practicing coordinated strikes. But the September 2025 tests will be remembered as the day Fujian proved itself. A day when China's third carrier, the first of its kind, moved from speculation into reality. So what does this mean in one sentence? It means China has entered the exclusive club of nations that can launch stealth fighters and AWACS planes from a catapult carrier deck. And the footage, as reported by the Warzone, leaves no room for doubt. Whether Fujin will live up to its potential remains to be seen, but its tests have already made history. Not tomorrow, not years from now, but today. The deck of Fujin has spoken and the world is listening. Will this provoke instability in Asia or preserve a new balance of power? Share your view in the comments below. Should the world be alarmed or simply be prepared? And don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth military analysis because the future of global power may be decided not on land, but on the decks of carriers like Fujian.